Hey guys, Kurt Wilson, Beats on Bites. Uh, we're going to speak with Michael Halbrick today, who was Eddie Haskell's uh, manager, agent, publicity agent, uh, friend, uh, just had worked with him for a ton of years on a ton of different projects. Uh, sit back and let's uh, tell some stories and uh, remember some great times from uh, Ken Osmond. Thanks. Back in the day when I was doing, when you and I first got a queen, actually, around that time, they had, um, they were on the Disney Channel originally. It yep. actually, chronologically, to understand it, it was a show originally, Leave it to Beaver, was on <coughs> CBS for six seasons. And when it went off the air, it, it stayed in syndication forever, although they didn't call it syndication then, they called it reruns. And uh, then they, they 19... 83 the tv movie was so successful and the tv movie is called still the beaver the tv movie spawned a disney show a series called still the beaver with the original cast yeah and it was a very very it was the highest rated show on the disney channel about that time universal studios who was making the show for the disney channel and at that time they said we're gonna they just in a conversation they told disney oh we're gonna start breaking ground on that that piece of property we have in Florida, we're going to call it Universal Studios Florida. And Disney said, oh, no, you're not. And the, the Universal said, you can't stop us. So they immediately canceled Still the Beaver. It was their highest rated show on the network. This is an inside scoop of what happens on in the entertainment industry. This is how it works, yes. And so they, they canceled the show, and they went to all the actors, and they said, um, Universal went to all the actors and said, we believe in the show, but we have no place to air it. But we're going to continue making it because otherwise he would have brought him back for you know a few episodes and then dropped him. That would have really left a bad taste in their mouth. Absolutely. And Brian LeVan, who created the, the movie of the week for CBS that was like the highest rated TV movie of the week for that year. And was that was how all the reboot movies from all the TV shows that have been done reboot movies and reunion movies, that's a gold standard for them all, was right. called Still the Beat. And so when Brian Levant got everybody still working, even without a network, um, they eventually got Ted Turner to, to buy a oodle bunch of episodes, and they'd be on TBS. So then that got them all working, and we were in Los Angeles working. And then all of a sudden, as it got closer to really finalizing the theme park in Orlando, they said, you know what? Everybody in the world knows David Beaver because it has never been off the air in 45 years. Yeah. So let's move the show to Orlando. And they've already pissed off all the cast members, you know, 30 years ago by saying, we're not giving you residuals and stuff like that. When Universal asked the, the cast members if they could move to Florida, they, they had me do it because I was, I was a really good um, friend to all the cast members. And so I went to each one of them, got them all to say yes, and Universal was really surprised so then we all relocated to Orlando for two seasons of the show to continue making it. Once they got to 100 episodes, they all got a little bonus. And that was the bonus that they were promised if uh, we, to get them back to the original Still the Beaver movie of the week and Still the right. Beaver series. They said, hey, if we could get to 100 series episodes and we could syndicate it, by now syndication was a big deal in the TV industry. Give you a bonus, and they sort of went, because at that point we were on basic cable. Yeah, penetration in the country of basic cable at that point was less than twenty percent. So the odds of getting a hundred episodes not even likely. But then when we went on to TBS, which if you remember is a super station, it's broadcast in a lot of areas for on your basic. Uh, you didn't need uh, the a pay camp pay channel like Disney or uh, HBO or something like that. It was just a super channel that's all over the country. Yep. So that's what really kept the show going was Ted Turner, and uh, so and, and Ken was he was he was you know I didn't have to sweet talk him into it he was there with the whole ride he was um, he's one of the really the four cast members Barbara well five counting Lumpy Frank Bank you've got Tony Dow you've got Jerry Mathers Barbara Billingsley Frank Bank and Ken Osmond were the five principals because when they came back for the new. Uh, still the Beaver movie of the week. Hugh Beaumont had just passed away not too shortly, right before they started filming. Hmm. So it was unfortunate. Okay.
Interesting story about Tony Dow. I actually met him years later. Uh, he was a competitive diver, and yeah. I was a competitive diver as well. And he was doing an uh, exhibition someplace, and uh, my coach knew his coach and uh, met him that way. You were going way back. Yeah, I was going, yeah, way back, actually before the beginning of time. In fact, uh, we actually dove into dirt because it was prior to water being invented. So you knew all of the cast members. Why were you the person chosen to basically formulate this deal that was going to make uh, a great move for everybody? Well, it, it made a lot of people very, very rich. Um, what happened is when I graduated from high school, I did something that my parents said, you, you're not going to do this. I joined the circus. Oh, I, cool. became a clown, I became a clown with the Ringling Brothers Circus. Yes. And every every they had a, dream, by the way. Every, every parent's nightmare, actually. Exactly. Um, and what happened is they had a theme park in Orlando. Yeah. And so my twin brother and I, we were the first twin clowns in the history of Ringling Brothers Circus. And they want to promote, even though everybody knows where Orlando is, they really want to promote the Orlando theme park called Circus World. Okay. So my brother and I, we went there and we went all over the world promoting this one theme park for Ringling Brothers Circus as the world's first identical twin clowns. So I had lived in Orlando for two years. And that, even that was back in 1979 to 1981. And I had heard rumblings that, oh, Universal's coming, Universal's coming. So yeah. I went and brought a condo down in Orlando because I knew someday I could go work at Universal, I could live in my condo, and life would be peachy keen. Yeah. So then I moved to LA and did everything where I met you, I worked with Ken Cragen, did everything that I did. And then um, that's when Universal started getting serious. It took 10, 15 years before that really happened, before yeah. they started getting dirt. The first thing they built was the sound stages. So when I heard they were actually building sound stages, I sent a note. I was working in the mailroom originally. And um, then I worked, went into publicity. I got on the new Leave to Beaver. And I started making some real some, um, strides in the fact that I was getting a lot of publicity for the show because I was using the same publicity that Ringling Brothers taught my brother and I how to do on the circus. I was using it on the new Leave it to Beaver right. because it, the whole P.T. Barnum thing, uh, there's not a sucker born every minute, but there's no bad, no such thing as bad publicity, only good publicity. Right. So I learned it and I started using it and people were like, what the hell is going on? This show is, you know, is a cable show and we were getting more fan mail. We were getting more attention than Knight Rider and Murder, She Wrote and some of the other shows that Universal was produ producing at the time. Right. So people at Universal said, we have to get the show to Florida, not only to up Disney, because Disney had the Hollywood studios down here at the time, <clears throat> which was a motion picture studio. It was a theme park. So Universal wanted to open it as an actual working motion picture studio. So as they were building the rides and stuff like that, the first things they built, built were the sound studios. Right. Then once we had those built, or once Universal had those built, then they wanted to fill them with actual TV production. So I had heard that was going on. So I sent a nut, you know, all the way to the top of the Black Tower at Universal City and said, hey, if you ever want somebody to go to Universal in Florida, I'm your guy, and here's why I'll go. And I said what I had done for, for the circus, for Ringling Brothers, for the theme park here. And then also the fact I said, and this is what I'm currently doing for you at Universal. I'm the, the head publicist of Leave it to Beaver, of the new Leave it to Beaver. And they're like, Dude, everything gelled. So yeah. I got somebody at the Black Tower, and Brian Levant was there, the executive producer, and they said, is this something you want to do? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, you have to go convince them. So I went to each of the cast members, all five of them, sat them down, and said, this is what it's going to take. Because they real, nobody really thought they'd up and move. We had to get a two-year commitment from them. And the hard part, we had to get them to relocate to Florida for two years. Yeah. Um, be, in order to, because they had to move all the sets, they had to move everything to Florida. Sure. And um, so when I went to each one of them, I also found out that it was going to be very expensive to put them up in hotels because in Orlando, we're the number right now, we're the number one tourist destination in the world. So if there's, they're not just going to let a hotel just have somebody throw their coat there and go back to LA for two weeks and come back. That's a lot of lost revenue for any hotel, even like Days Inn or something like that. And they weren't going to stay at Days Inn. So I found an apartment complex that was just being built. Yeah. And we negotiate a deal where each actor would get their own two-bedroom apartment, 
they could have input on some of the painting and some of the carpeting and some of the colors and stuff like that because it was a brand new complex. Yeah. We sent a security guard out front and we called it Camp Cleaver. And so we also got them a LeBaron convertible and they could turn it in and out of the airport when they came into town and when they left because they had unlimited first class tickets. If they weren't in an episode, I'd fly them back to LA. And I told them all this. And they yeah. said, oh, my God, it's like, you know, and I painted the worst case scenario. I said, we could put you in a hotel. And if you went back to, to L.A., you'd have to check out and do all this and stuff like that. I'm giving you a two bedroom. And I use it as me because they trusted me. They didn't trust Universal because of the shenanigans from the, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. Right. So, so I used my leverage as as a, a, a personal friend of them. And I said, I will give you a two bedroom apartment. You can have all the friends you want to stay there. If you're not there, you can give you a key and have somebody else stay there. Whatever you want, animals. So Tony Dow brought his dog. Mm -hmm. And so, so like for Ken, it was great because two of his kids were, were in the show. So his wife Sandy came down for a while. And well, it was yeah. just like, it, it was an incredible experience for two years. Wow. So he didn't, have any, he didn't have any doubts that this was something he wanted to do, even though he'd been out of the entertainment business for a while. Yeah. He, he just... Um, the money was really good, <coughs> and, and Ken Osmond knows the value of a dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so the other thing that I was able to offer them is a per diem. So they would say, wait a minute, wait, hold the phone. You mean we're going to still get the amount of money that we're getting paid as a salary plus we get this per diem, which was just like cash on top of cash. Yeah. And most of them, they would take that per diem, and they'd never even look at their paycheck. They'd just put it straight in the bank. So for two years, these guys made bank. And at one point, they were highest paid uh, performers on cable TV because of everything that was going on. And they deserved it. Yeah, they right. Deserved it. Um, and, and, but Ken was, he, he loved Florida. He's a country boy at heart. So mm -hmm. you know, he, he lived in Shadow Hills in California, which right. is off the beaten path of down, down from Universal. So it's not, it's more of country, country ish. It's grown up a lot, but it's yeah. country. And so, uh, um, the apartment complex that I had them here was a, a complex that was sort of in the woods. Yet, I mean, it's been really developed since that time. Right. But because Universal has really grown and a lot of major resort hotels have been built alongside it. But at the time, it's just a country road. It's very fun. And, and he loved it. He really, really liked it. Plus, he had his two sons here. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, let me ask you this. So he was a child actor, right, Ken? Yeah. Not like Terry Mathers, but he did a few things as a kid, yeah. Okay. Uh, how did he get the part in uh, the, the original Leave it to Beaver? It was, it how was just... How did he walk in and be the smarmy guy? How did, how did, he, how did he do that? <coughs> Excuse me. We didn't really... I, I've never really talked to him about that. And that was um, something that I, I think it was just a, a really good audition. But what happens? what happened in... In retrospect, or not in retrospect, but as he was developing the character, he, Bob Mosher and Joe Conley were the creators of the series. Okay. And the reason that they cast Jerry Mathers was Jerry Mathers was more interested in going to the Cub Scout meeting than auditioning. And they said that's what they wanted. They didn't want actors. Right. right and right. so Ken, Ken Osmond was just like, hey, Sam, what, you know, what are you going to do for me? You know, and, and let me give you the business. And, and a lot of the stuff that he, he was using the phrases he was using. They were taking copious notes, and they start writing into the script. Yeah, and and they now became like some some of the catchphrases and stuff like that from that era from the 1950s. And I remember some scripts where he knew the character so well that they would hand him a script. They did a table reads at the beginning of each week, and he'd say Eddie wouldn't say that, and nobody ever corrected him. They said, "What would Eddie say?" Yeah, and when he would say what Eddie would say. He was right. He knew that. <laughs> and he lived that character for, for years sure. uh, because he really created an iconic character. But it was it was just because he was so – when I was an agent, and you knew me then, yeah. uh, when I was an agent, I would tell some of the casting directors, this actor and this performer is so good, you won't know that they're acting. And the casting director would pull the hair out and say, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but sometimes Ken Osmond. If yeah. you would sit there and meet him, he would be totally different than his character. But yet his character was so strong, you would, if you didn't know, you would say, that's him. No, nobody is that good of an actor. Right. But he, he was that good. 
I, I actually read a quote from Jerry Mathers saying that he felt that uh, Ken Osmond was the best actor in the show because he was so not like that character. Exactly, and that's exactly right. Yeah. 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 And yet he was so believable and, and so impactful as that character, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah, we, we had a lot of talks about that. And it was fun because when, when I was with Ken, I mean, I traveled all over the world with a lot of different celebrities. But when I was with Ken, it was different because he appealed to everybody. Mm -hmm. And, and um, and it's funny because I could be with Jerry, Tony, and Ken, and people would gravitate towards Ken. And that would really piss off Jerry and Tony. Oh. And most of them, Jerry, Tony just didn't give a crap, you know? Hey, I want to thank Michael Halbrick for coming by. Also, uh, we got some more stories from Michael. Michael's got some stories. So uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so I can let you know when that's online. Thanks so much for being here. Take care.